stay connected and get up in their faces. Stay big, zip light, knock them over. Yeah? Connect, guys, connect. Yeah, yeah Sam's come in. Obviously, uh, Bay of Plenty haven't had a game this week and had a couple of liquids with him back in uh, January and was telling him how how great the mighty King Country Rams were, but I didn't actually think we'd end up uh, booting up together, so it's pretty good. Uh, Piggy pipes up, our head coach, and says, um, next weekend we have Wanganui, so we have to flush this game. And we've got a new number seven coming in, and um, it's gonna be Sam Kane. So you can just imagine the excitement in the changing rooms. Yeah, there's some young fellas in the team that uh, really look up to him and, and appreciate what he's done as an All Black and, and, and within New Zealand rugby, so they're just uh, thrilled with the opportunity to be alongside him in there in the changing shed and uh, get out on the field with him. Had a shoulder reconstruction about six months ago and uh, finally ready to play some rugby again. And luckily, uh, it's worked out that I can play for King Country. It's a good fit, being just down the road from where I grew up. and. Um, I'm um, thankful for the, for the team and the boys for, for welcoming me in and having me for this game. So we're about to head out and play Wanganui at 2.30 and really looking forward to it. Yeah, Wanganui today, um, they're always a tough opposition and, and they've been going pretty well this season. Uh, we got the Pine Tree Log up for grabs um, that we won last year and uh, they'll certainly be coming out to um, try and get their hands back on that, that's for sure. We are down um, eight numbers due to fellas being split in the North King Country who couldn't come down today uh, due to lockdown, but we have reinforcements and um, Sam is one of them, so I think we'll do all right today. Yeah, awesome. Um, just great to be back playing rugby. Um, thankful for uh, King Country Rugby for having me part of their part of their team um, for this weekend. And yeah, it was, a, it was actually a pretty tough game, um, but I love being back out there. It's been it's been a good week. Um, guys have really enjoyed it. Um, I think they've got a lot out of it. A um, little disappointed, of course, in the result today, but um, you know. We've certainly got a lot out of having Sam here and he's uh, covered himself in glory really. It's, uh, it's been great for the group and um, so easy to work with. The physicality, the, the contact that you can't really replicate at training and um, just that, those rugby instincts and kicking back into gear. So um, yeah, we bit rusty that's for sure, but um, nice to buy some cobwebs out. You know, he threw himself into contact and stuff without any hesitation and um, you know, he's good to go for the ABs, that's for sure. Board the plane on uh, Thursday Thursday evening to Washington DC, so pretty excited to, to link back up with the team. I wonder when the three cheers stopped. You know, I enjoyed that. Three cheers. I'm pretty I'm sure they still would have had the liquids after the, the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we met over a couple of liquids. Over a couple okay, of yeah. liquids. Pretty <laughs> sure that wasn't orange juice, but anyway. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the fact that Sam Kane is obviously going to go and rejoin the All Blacks uh, and prepare for a test match against the US of A. Probably, if you're thinking about reintroducing some All Blacks back into a game, Mills, this is probably not a bad one, the likes of Sam Whitelock. But the concern being, the USA just lost to Uruguay and have now not qualified for the Rugby World Cup yet and have to play against Chile. Is that, is that concerning? We saw a team like Tonga, which struggled, and they had no preparation. Are you, the USA, are they under some serious pressure to find something over the next couple of weeks? Oh, well, considering they've had the, the MRR over there and their own sort of competition and what they're sort of doing, um, they now face an All Blacks team that you know have just lost the game. So how motivated are they going to be? They've had a couple of weeks off as well. Um, it is concerning because we've spoken about it often, JK, about the growth of the game. And if we can get in, and if America can be successful, it would just be massive in terms of the, the glo global aspect of, of rugby. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing that concerns me, uh, one thing we need to think about is the rich get richer. And we talk about it every year. You need a strong club competition, that's part of our strength. You know, the, the Bunnings Cup, we 
deliver, you know, 300 players every year. Um, you need to play in competitions. We need to get over ourselves and have, OK, we can have the championship, but we also need to be playing against America, Canada, you know, Japan. We need to think about that. Rather than playing each other twice, let's just extend that. And the greatest thing when I took over as the Japanese coach was um, after the World Cup, I went in and we had a blow up about not getting games. They started the Pacific Nations Cup and, and we and we started winning after three or four years because we were playing against Fiji, Samoa and Tonga consistently and that really helped our players. So we just have to be a little less selfish from world rugby point of view and just say, let's open this up a bit. Let's have a competition every year with some of these nations play. And if it's Uruguay, fine. But this is concerning the fact Canada for the first time are not going to a Rugby World Cup. You talk about North America, talking about that potential, and maybe Major League Rugby is just a little bit new, and they're not seeing the fruits of that yet. But the likes of a Uruguay, which are going, again, Chile putting themselves in the conversation, these are great stories. Mm. If you think about, obviously, some people behind the scenes are doing some great work. So you talk about test matches, and these guys getting opportunities, these Rugby World Cup qualifiers are really important for everybody in terms of exposure. And they... they place all their bets on that, that Rugby World Cup qualify in, the, in those sort of, in South America, right? They're, they're traditionally, you know, very strong. And they've got Argentina just up the road as well, whereas you probably have to look at the focus of where USA rugby are and also Canada, you know, have, have they put more emphasis into the sevens game and perhaps, you know, that might have sort of uh, hindered their performance in terms of the, the 15 aspect. So it's it's massive for a team, you know, for your way to get back in there considering they haven't had much competition as well. So in terms of their domestic stuff, you know, what are they actually doing differently to, to the, the, the big guns with big money? You talk about this game though, JK, and we've, we've, and it's clear, this is a financial opportunity as well for New Zealand rugby. It does take a big test match into America again. We have played Ireland in America in recent seasons. Is this not just about the rugby, this is about giving people another opportunity to see the All Blacks, and should it be that way? I don't think it's got anything to do with the rugby, to be fair. I think it's got to do with sponsors and trying to grow the game. Uh, you know, we often talk about playing games in Samoa Mills or, or Fiji. We need to continue to do that. We have the strongest rugby brand in the world, and at some stage you've got to put the money aside and give back. And so I think if you can combine that with, you know, AIG's on their way out, but when they came in, they said, we'd like you to come to America, so you do it. And I don't mind that. I don't think it's got a lot to do with the rugby, because it should be a bit of a one-sided affair, but it's great for the game. That, it'll be full, introduce a new market to the to the game. I, and I think, to go back to your point, it needs to be progressive. It can't just be, you know, one year, year, and then another, you know, another, another couple of years, just have another game. I think going to a, a sort of a tournament type scenario or where, you know, other teams are going, at, at, we just had the championship, something similar to that to help grow the game rather than just going off just for a one off, just to appease sort of, you know, sponsorships and, and get a little bit of money in the coffins for, a, you know, for another couple of years before we go back there again when we're actually in need of it. I think it needs to grow in terms of that, in terms of having other teams. In, in saying that, the JK, I mean, these are challenging times. The fact that we've talked throughout the course of the year in regards to what New Zealand rugby are facing financially. We haven't heard a lot around the future of the Silver Lake deal with them. So do you get the things at the moment that are in the balance? We've found a couple of new sponsors, one from Japan, one from France. Are we still trying to balance the books? Do we need to make sure the game can survive first and foremost? Well, I, I'm really passionate about sport. Obviously love my rugby, but the world is really changing. Uh, Italian soccer has been taken over by a lot of these funds. Um, and it seems to me that some of these funds are now targeting what I believe are, are competitions that aren't really that professional yet, you know. Um, most of soccer in the UK, it's been 10 or 15 years, Mills, since the guys have come in and taken over. You've seen the money involved around that. But now they're looking at rugby and they're looking at soccer and nations that aren't quite there, and it's all these big funds. So we've got to get on the, we've got to get on the, on the boat. New Zealand hunting for money. You are hunting for pizza. What are you hunting for before next week's breakdown? I'm hunting for a steady week. Steady week this week. <laughs> well, guess what? We're at home again, so you've got time <laughs> to get on it and get working. Look, I'll tell you what, as always, there'll be rugby for you to watch on the weekend. Pretty for us to look forward to. Our NPC will continue. It'll be competitive and there'll be huge results. We'll bring all of it to you once again next Monday night here at Sky. So on behalf of everyone, once again, in the breakdown, we've got plenty more to talk about in seven days' time. We will see you then. Thanks for watching. Matewa.